What's going on everybody, Mortem here, this time bringing you 5 tips for Elix 2. Elix 2 is of course the sequel to the original Elix, but more importantly it's a direct sequel. So if you are familiar with the original game, a lot of this you might already know, but for those looking to jump into Elix 2 or just looking for some general tips, let's dive into 5 of the things that I personally think are the most useful. Starting with tip number 1 of course, and that is to upgrade your jetpack. So the jetpack was in the original Elix as well, and it facilitates a great deal of freedom of exploration. And while early game and primary use is largely breaking your fall so you don't die every time you jump off a cliff, in this particular game there is also the possibility of upgrading your jetpack at the jetpack upgrade bench. Now this is available at the hub of Bastion, which the main story will lead you to fairly early on. And at this bench, we can upgrade our jetpack in exchange for parts as well as ability points. Now, you'll actually have a great many ability points available to you for another reason that we will get into shortly. But it does cost you your ability points, which you normally get one per level up, but there are ways of getting more of them. But with this system, we can upgrade our jetpack to include things like automatically breaking our fall if we run out of fuel midair. We can increase our fuel capacity, how long the fuel lasts, etc. But basically, you can make the jetpack very, very viable for transporting yourself around the map and taking full advantage of the terrain. Now, for our second tip, if you're familiar with Piranha Bytes games at all, you might know that you start their games very weak. Now, Elix 2 does a better job overall of smoothing out the starting experience in comparison to the first game. However, the primary concepts still remain in place, and as such, it is highly recommended that you do all of the quests that you can in towns that are mostly non-combat quests. This is going to give you the opportunity to level up to kind of the 15 to 20 range, at which point you'll have increased your attributes and hopefully upgraded your gear and your combat proficiency a bit to the point where you can walk into the wild world out there without immediately dying, as you will start the game very weak and trying to tackle things head on can be a bit of a death sentence. Now, again, the game did a better job of evening everything out this time around. So unlike the original game, you're not going to find in-game enemies in starter areas. But on to our third tip, and that is to use ranged weapons. So in the original game, ranged weapons were a bit of a late game luxury. You didn't really get any of them towards the beginning of the game. However, in the second title, they throw some ranged weapons at you right in the opening section of the game that you can actually use. And you're definitely going to want to use them because while damage-wise they might be relatively weak, in this particular game there are actually flying enemies that are almost impossible to hit with anything but a ranged weapon. Now you will get companions that can potentially help you with this as they might be ranged themselves, but even if you are not a ranged character and don't plan on doing a lot of ranged stuff, you're probably going to want to have a bow or something with you simply because of the fact that some of the enemies are permanently in flight such as some of the drones, etc., and really the only effective way to kill them is to pick them off with a bow or, you know, like a rifle, etc. So you're definitely going to want to have those ranged weapons, as being purely melee is probably not a good idea. And then for our fourth tip, we have our Elix and permanent attribute increasing potions. So in the original game, Elix potions existed, and they came in small, medium, and large form and they would increase your experience points, your attribute points, and your ability points accordingly. However, in the original game, drinking Elix potions would increase your cold level, and if you did this too much, it could force you into the bad ending. However, the cold level does not exist in Elix 2. It was replaced by a different system, which removed the penalty for drinking Elix potions. You can just drink as many of them as you want, which means if you get the chemistry skill, you can make your own Elix potions just like the first game, and there is no penalty to just chugging them and making your character a god. And they actually took this one step farther. In addition to Elix potions, you can find permanent attribute increasing potions around the world. These will just permanently increase your attributes by one point. Now you might be thinking that these would be on par with the medium Elix potions because medium Elix potions give you so many attribute points per level, but the difference is that attribute points actually have an increasing cost to increase them via level up attribute points, whereas the attribute increasing potions will increase your attributes by a flat point regardless of where you are on the ever increasing amount of attribute points needed to actually increase the attribute, meaning where late game five attribute points from your level up might only give you one extra point in an attribute, 
drinking one of these potions will just give you that point for free. So not only did they remove the penalty from Elix potions, but they actually expanded it with other potions that would be even more helpful. And then for our last tip, we have the companion quest. Now this might seem obvious, but I want to explain why this is so helpful. While you're out exploring the town hubs, you want to make sure you pick up all the companions as that is mostly where you can find them with one or two of them found kind of out in the world. But when you have all these companions, they will, of course, give you their companion quests and they will ask you to help them. But they don't just ask you to help them. If you agree to take on the quest, they instantly teleport you to the quest location, which can be all around the map. This is very useful because you can use this to then unlock the teleporters, which are the fast travel points around the world for basically free and not even have to walk to them because you just got teleported there by a companion. Combine this with the fact that most of the companion quests are very easy and thus are essentially free XP plus free teleporter locations and you've got yourself a fantastic deal for very little work. So you should definitely round those guys up and take advantage of their quests for the XP and the free fast travel points. But there you go, guys, five tips for Elix 2. I certainly hope you found them helpful and that you are enjoying the title of Elix 2. I personally am very fond of the Elix franchise, hence why I'm making these videos. But that said, again, hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.